Today, we will talk about PlayStation gamers upset about Sony's state of play presentation. What are they really mad about? You know what? Let's get into it. Hey, after a stellar and record-breaking 2018, it seems that Sony has lost some of his mojo so far in 2019. They've canceled shows including E3, their top-notch games they're known for seem to be absent, and now the marketing geniuses themselves give fans a show that, to say the least, they did not love. The first episode of State of Play, Sony's answer to, to Nintendo's Direct and inside Xbox seem to have flopped bad. <laughs> the company even appeared to have deleted the video and re-uploaded to apparently reset the dislikes. Whoa. Now this all leaves gamers with the thought of what the hell is going on? Well, your boy will help you figure this all out. But before we get too deep into this, it's your boy MM2K back again with another one. Look, can y'all please do me a huge favor because I've been away for a while, you know what I'm saying? And some people may have faded off from, you know, subscribing to your boy's channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and rock those bells for me, please. And let you know when I'm coming through with these doses because y'all need it. I've been away too long. Y'all need this medicine straight up. And as always, I appreciate all of y'all. Now that's a double straight up. All right, y'all, now let's figure this one out, okay? You know what I'm saying? Now, to do that, first let's talk what has caused them to scale back on shows and change their approach to some things. Secondly, let's talk about who's to blame, you know what I'm saying, for this direction by PlayStation. And lastly, what can we do as a gaming community to fix this, all right? Now, first, people, let's talk what caused them to scale back on shows changed your approach to where like 2019 seems dry you know what i'm saying and do some other things that have raised some eyebrows including this state of play show look man first and foremost i just want to do this if you haven't subscribed to the show like i said earlier please subscribe to it because your boy mm2k has been telling you for the longest that the playstation that you know that be at the psx's all up in the videos, you know what I'm saying? Talking about how we would never do this and never do that. But meanwhile, an investor calls you like, Psst, all right, we gonna have service-based games, you know what I'm saying? We gonna do that streaming stuff. I done told y'all for the longest it was coming. That reckoning day was coming and now it is here. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so here's what's been going on as of late. Okay. Well, let me, let me back up a little bit. First you had, I think it was, early 2018 or late 2017 when playstation went through his big swap of execs and stuff like that you know what i mean andrew house was out kador replaced him you know what i'm saying uh um and other people were gone right and being replaced during this whole transitional period sony had an investor call where they told people look we are not looking at the usual measurements anymore to determine success we're looking at some of the same things that Xbox is looking at, user-based subscriptions, and we are increasing our footprint when it comes to what? Service-based games. Now, in lieu of Microsoft talking heavily about xCloud and them getting all this market praise, and now we got Google Stadia coming out, and then there's talks of Amazon dipping their foot in the pool, you know what I'm saying? And then even the success of Google Stadia's uh, um, announcement, you also see rumors about Walmart wanting to jump into this whole shebang. I mean, it's getting crazy out here. So where does that leave Sony? Now fast forward to, to current times, okay, with PlayStation, where you've had investors look at Sony's 2019 portfolio in regards to the PlayStation alone. And PlayStation is the big money maker there. And those same investors went back to the market and said, look, 2019 may not be the year that you want to invest in Sony investors because their PlayStation portfolio doesn't look like that it is going to be that big of a deal in comparison to 2018. 
Now, many of you may be thinking to yourself, MM2K, that don't even matter. The PlayStation console is still selling like gangbusters. They're probably still going to sell a whole bunch of multiplats, even if their 2019 exclusive lineup is dry as it looks like it may be. And this is where MM2K got to do the I told you so, even though I don't want to. I've told y'all that y'all business acumen when it comes to gaming needs to increase so you can know in advance what moves these companies are going to make and why before you come out here and look and sound like idiots. What do I mean by that? As I always tell you, when you're a Fortune 500 company and you're, tr you're publicly traded, okay, you have some complex competitors. You not only have the other business entities that you may be in the same business sector with that you're trying to do better than, but then you also got to do better than yourself. So if in 2018, if you made $100 million, right? Say your, 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 your revenue in the black, as they call it now, I believe, is $100 million. But in 2019, your revenue in the black is $90 million. Yeah, $90 million is still a lot of money. $100 million is only $10 million more. But the problem is, is that the market doesn't look at it that way. The market says, hey, when I invested my dollar, you made $100 million. Now you're making less. Are you going to make less the following year too? So the value of that dollar that I've invested into your company actually decreases in the market. So that's why it's important that you always show sustained growth financially year over year. That's why you hear those terms. And with the stellar year that Sony had in 2018, they can't afford to have a flat year in 2018 as it relates to investors. It may not matter to gamers that much, but again, to investors, that means everything. And to Sony, and to any Fortune 500 company, what investors think about your company means everything as well. Think about that. So because 2019 may be flat in different areas, Sony has to pull the lever on different initiatives, even if they're not ready to roll them out as fast as uh, Microsoft maybe, or Google, or even Amazon, right? They gotta show that they're getting into streaming, right? They gotta show that they're becoming more digital, okay? They gotta show that they're making infrastructure investments. And they also gotta show that they're trimming the fat. One of the big fats are E3, unfortunately, right? E3 is, a, is really a trade and conference show where uh, game developers and publishers and even console makers go to trade and, and, and market their goods and services. Well, the way the gaming uh, community and market is right now, you no longer have to wait till E3. So E3, in essence, is you're paying all this money to do the, the, the shebang and the powwows with, with different uh, um, entities in the business world to sell your goods and services. But you're mainly doing this as fanfare. Sony can't afford to do this now because they got to make investments in infrastructure and changing some of their business model to become more attractive to investors. So because of that, E3 is a no-no. And that's and, and, and that's just the gist of it. So if anybody thinks that, oh, Sony is just changing things just to change it, no, that, that, that is not true. They're doing this because they got to change their infrastructure they got to increase your infrastructure things like psn now has to become more reliable in order to compete with the x cloud and stadia now with the integration of streaming with gaming consoles you hear a lot of people yelling and screaming like this is going to be the end of hardware and all this other stuff look as i've been explaining on various podcasts on various uh um videos that I've done in the past and streams we are a long way before streaming replaces console even though Google Stadia is going to do the full streaming thing that's going to be an option for people that game on the go okay but for those of us the hardcore the people that are listening to this video the people that listen to the state of plays and the inside Xbox and the Nintendo directs our consoles are not going anywhere, okay? I, as an Xbox enthusiast, may have some concerns about how Xbox may plan to support their console, but for PlayStation gamers, I don't think you guys have anything to worry about in the least. Now, with that said, because you have two dynamics here, which to me is kind of comical. 
you have Xbox, and again, I'm an Xbox enthusiast, you have Xbox that are ignoring their hardcore <laughs> for the most part, and they're putting out stuff that the hardcore, for the most part, do not want to feast on, you know what I'm saying, it's not appealing to them whatsoever, hence why they're getting walloped in sales, right? Then you have Sony, that even though behind the scenes they know they got to make these infrastructure changes, they, 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 they latch on to Mindshare, which a lot of us praise, but I think they hold on to it a little bit too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're the first ones that, that bought streaming services, you know, before it was even a, a big shebang over at Microsoft. So with that being said, Sony should be far more ahead where they're at right now. I get it. You wanted to make the investments in putting out games and, and things like that. But see, when you listen solely to your fanboys, as far as your marketing is concerned and, and your outreach is concerned, when you listen to your fanboys, your fanboys aren't the greatest in business. So now you put yourself in a rut. Instead of having a good balance where you give your hardcore fans what they want, which is the games, and you give them the dedicated uh, devices, and also make these investments in infrastructures. If you would have done this a little bit sooner and, and some small trickles and said, hey, we're just investing for the future. This ain't going to affect you guys. This is for your kids or your kids' kids. You know what I mean? Instead of doing something like that, because Sony solely was set on mindshare and entertaining their, their more hardcore base, they are behind the curve big time and they've had to flip the switch and yank the cord a little bit faster than what some people anticipate and that's why everybody's confused. So if you're looking for someone to blame, right, for the sudden shift, the sudden pivot, and, and Sony's presentation style, the lacklusterness of it, the fact that, they're, that their lineup may be dry for 2019, the fact that they're talking more streaming, pulling digital sales from other retailers, it's because they had to make a fast pivot because they front loaded everything in 2018 trying to beat the lowest common denominator, which is Microsoft, and now they're at a loss in, in, in many ways, not everywhere. I'm not saying they're down or out. No, they are still the king. But the king is wobbling a little bit right now. I got, he, 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 you know what I'm saying? He got a little limp, okay? And you got to look at the man in the mirror, okay, to see why this is happening. So, what do we do from here? How do we help Sony get into better footing so they're not so much at a loss going into next gen? Well, a couple of things. Stop judging and rating performance by the lowest common denominator, okay? I want to use a sport reference. If I'm a cornerback, I'm expected to run the 50-yard dash as fast as maybe 4.5 seconds, 4.4 seconds, 4.3 seconds, right? Now, just because our conference rivals, wide receivers may run, who the cornerback normally guards may run the 50-yard dash at 4.7 seconds, I should not be satisfied with having a cornerback that just runs at 4.6 seconds, right? And I'm just throwing numbers out here. But you, you catch my drift. As a corner, I want the best and the fastest cornerback for him to be consistent regardless of what my competition is doing. Yes, I want him to be better than the competition, but if the competition ain't on their game, I don't want to, 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 to train my team to base my gameplay off the lowest common denominator. Microsoft had too many issues this generation for y'all to just sit there, look at the performance that Sony is doing versus them and saying, all right, you got it in a bag. That's it. Sony could be doing even better than what they are. Hence, look at their performance going into 2019. All you got right now definitively is days gone. Death Stranding in all intents and purposes is not coming out 2019. Last of Us, in all intents and purposes, is not coming out 2019. You don't really, after days gone, you really don't have any big bangers except for MLB, which is, you know, is a critically acclaimed baseball game. But how many of y'all are playing this critically acclaimed baseball game? Y'all are in it and y'all are fans of Sony for the variety, yes, I get it, but mainly, come on, it's for the third person over the shoulder action games that y'all love so much. And after days gone, which may be the least appealing out of all those efforts that have been shown by Sony so far this generation, hey, 2019 ain't looking too hot. Again, some of you are saying, well, how does Xbox look? Who cares how Xbox looks? 
Xbox is the lowest common denominator, and that is coming from an Xbox enthusiast, okay? So, how do we help Sony get out of this? Again, stop judging uh, uh, by the lowest common denominator. Secondly and lastly, understand, Sony fan, regardless of how much you may be kicking and screaming, how much you may hate it, Sony at least dipping their foot and making the right moves towards streaming is going to be your best friend. <laughs> and here's how. Again, as I said at the beginning of this video, as a Fortune 500 company, you have to not only compete with other business entities, but you have to compete with yourself on the market. By Sony at least showing periodically and being able to pronounce without repercussion that they are making strides in streaming and being able to demo these strides, right? For the casual consumer while still giving the hardcore consumer the their, their physical hardware and the, and the native gameplay that they want, they satisfy the market part and they get more money. And guess what, hardcore gamer? That's more money for the games that you want. So at the very least, get out of your silos. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stop kicking and screaming. You got that dag on social media. You know what I'm saying? Stop doing that. I want to stay in my horse and carriage. You know, there's damn automobiles. Stop doing that and understand that streaming right now is your best friend. All right. So with that being said, me as an Xbox enthusiast, I want to see PlayStation not only just do better than Xbox than what is now the lowest common denominator. I want X I want PlayStation to strive because when they strive and they take it all the way, Microsoft can't sit there and say, oh, with the minimum effort that we put in, we're still making a lot of money. If Sony really goes far and really kills it, the gap is going to be so wide, right? So wide. And I'm not just talking about the sales, I'm talking about the money made. That's what's really going to open Microsoft's eyes. If the money made is double or triple, if that gap is double or triple, Microsoft is going to say, oh, goodness, we're going to have to stick to some more traditional um, activity when it comes to satisfying our hardcore base. So that makes things better for me. So the more things are better for you guys, they're better for me. The gaming community is happy and everybody's making money. You know what I mean? So again, understand why they're doing what they're doing from a business level. It's not that hard. Understand what you got to do as a consumer and let's get it done for the betterment of the gaming community. And that's it from your boy MM2K. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm glad to be back. It's a good feeling. That's why I went extra long on this one. But with that being said, you know, I always tell y'all, y'all y'all can come with me. You can come at me. It don't matter to your boy. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you like what you heard, you know what I'm saying? Follow me. All the links to follow your boy are below. Hey, yo, just so you're aware, I'm, on, I'm not only down with the broadband bullies, but I'm down with PNTS Network. We got a great lineup of shows, one of which is being Scram Punks. You know, the show that I do with your homeboy, Dirk Brigady, TRS, and your homie, Nethos. Do me a favor. Check out that show every Wednesday, 9 p.m., either on my channel or Dirk Griggity's channel. Subscribe to him if you're not subscribed to him already. And hey, yo, as I said, I rock with the broadband bullies, man. Bullies to the death. Check us out on Discord. Check us out as far as the merchandise is concerned. Check out the shows. I mean, they're top notch. You know what I mean? All the links to all that stuff is below. And as always, get out your silos. Help Sony be even better than what they are now. Don't let them sit and just be happy to be better than the lowest common denominator, okay? Because look, Nintendo's coming for that ass, all right? And as always, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.